so once we've designed uh, the uh, particular plate and placed everything it then goes into the resin printer and after roughly six seven hours depending on what the model type is it will be need to be removed from the metal uh, the uh, resin printer so uh, going into that so we'll very carefully take this particular off so this particular plate is the living bones uh, items so those are our 10 living bones on there and you'll see that there is a or lots of support material that's what all that uh, uh, trellis work type stuff is I'll just put that over there because we're, we're dripping resin everywhere so um, what I'll need to do now is to get under the thing and uh, scrape this off um, to take it off so if we're very careful we can actually get it all off in one nice little slice and there we have our living bones uh, in this case removed from the printer uh, going to go to the next stage so I'll take you to the bench and show you what we do from there on in so the next thing to do is to give the uh, particular model uh, a wash uh, what happens is is um, most of these are left in the uh, vat for a short while to allow to drip off but what you have got is a thin residue of the resin uh, on the model and uh, they need to be washed off now a lot of people use some different ways some people use uh, ultrasonic cleaners and things I've, I've used all those in the past but uh, I found uh, to be honest with you um, a little bit more faff and, and not really a lot of results so um, the next thing is obviously it goes into a container um, and then what we're going to be using is uh, not orange juice but isopropanol 99% rubbing alcohol um, which um, you can get online quite simply so literally just going to pour that all over and then I could have just done with a little bit more and basically give it a few minutes just to I say a few minutes I mean you can just very carefully give these a bit of a wash it just takes off that top layer uh, of residue sometimes depending if you want to you can uh, because they're on the supports and particularly with these living bones they're quite fragile I would say um, have a, a little toothbrush and you can go around and just very gently work it in I mean they're not that fragile most of the appendages and stuff are all under support at this stage but uh, you should really find that once that is completed we should see all that resin actually off there and simple case of just letting it uh, drain off I'll park it on there for a minute just to drain off which is fine uh, have yourself uh, a reasonable amount of paper towel around now obviously this is for viewers who are perhaps going to be doing their own but if you're just coming into this because you've taken up on the print service you won't be doing any of this now that leaves uh, quite a nice we don't have to bother I used to actually put these into a wash of water as well that used to leave odd residues around and uh, I've never found it necessary to actually do that again I you know we'll try and dab off as much as it can but it doesn't matter they, they paint well and undercoat well as they are so that is absolutely fine so we'll just uh, put those to one side now currently these are not fully cured um, they still feel quite soft to the touch relatively and uh, they're certainly not fully cured um, if you've had the print service then you will receive these um, as they are here and uh, you will then have to do a final curing process which quite simply is either under a UV lamp uh, or nail lamp or anything like that or literally if you're in an area where there's bright sunshine leave them out in the sunshine put them on the windowsill that, that's uh, UV, enough UV to finally set the top but uh, well, I'll take you through to the next stage but there is a reason why I won't actually UV these now um, I want them to remain sort of softy um, it helps clip off the supports and everywhere and uh, and then they'll be ready to mount on to their uh, stands and then go under the lamp uh, for the final curing process um, but that should there we are 
So we'll pick it up uh, now from where we're going into the clipping stage. Hi everybody, so uh, you're uh, going to be uh, using the print service or you may be thinking about using the print service and what I wanted to do was run down through you um, first of all uh, the items that you're going to need at your end to uh, separate the models, mount the models and so on and so forth and um, also some tips and tactics on how to actually get everything off the uh, supports um, so you can have everything put together. Now, I, the, what I'll do is I'll follow on to this once we've covered the basics of what you'll need into uh, some tactics and tips on how you go about that. It is very straightforward, um, but you do need the right equipment really. It's pretty inexpensive, and if you are going down the monsters line and uh, you know there's hundreds of them, uh, you um, will certainly uh, make use of a lot of it so uh, it's, it is very straightforward but you do need to make some care and think so here we have and it'll be uh, I'll show you these again later as they came out of the vat we have the collection of living bones these are the sort of soldier living bones not the living dead or anything so there's ten of them on there and as you can notice they're on a support plate and all the gantry looking work is the support material required for these particular models to actually print them and that support material needs cutting away. Now, uh, when you get these, they will feel they're not fully cured, so they'll need curing once we've uh, completed them. And the reason that they're left like that is to uh, make sure they sort of remain softish, yeah, and uh, the shock of clipping won't break any bits off. They're much easier to clip off that way. We then mount them on the stands and then. Um, they go under the uh, the final curing. Thing. So, what are the bits that I need um, to go ahead with? Well, let's have a look at the tools first of all. So, the tools that you're going to need is certainly a really good pair of side cutters. Now, I bought these ones. Uh, these are Tamiya side cutters. They cost me about 40 quid. And you know what? When I got them, um, my little cheap set of side cutters that came with my 3D printers uh, is equally good. But uh, really, get a nice sharp. Uh, pointed nozzle, uh, pointed nozzle, uh, pointy, yeah, uh, pincers, and those are your side cutters. So electrical side cutters will do very nicely. But obviously, the uh, if you can get them really pointed, that's even better. So they'll, they'll come like that mostly anyway. Um, you'll need uh, some form of craft knife, uh, preferably scalpel. Um, and scalpel blades easily uh, got rid of, but they just give you that nice light, uh, fine. Uh, scraping action that you can use just to remove a little bit of support. Not essential, you could use yourself a, a normal just razor blade, but uh, using a razor is a little bit bulky on there. I find that just the scalpel blades, and of course, then you, if you can, uh, once you've done with this, you'll be able to probably be an open heart surgeon. Uh, who knows? Um, a file, needle files, don't really use these a lot, but you might find these uh, handy. Um, just to remove some of the flash and bits and pieces that you might come across but you'll know what I mean when you get it. So from a hand tool point of view that is all you need um, from that perspective. Um, you will need to have some um, super glue. Um, I use this particular brand, I don't know if it's uh, available worldwide but it's called Mitafast. It's a slow setting glue and uh, when I spray the uh, Mitafast that obviously is the activator and it will set it there and then and I'll demonstrate the use of that later on. That's really just for mounting it on the stands uh, so very useful. So you're going to need super glue preferably with an activator um, to really get that um, activation going straight away. Um, the other thing that you will definitely need is a UV lamp. Now this is what I got off Amazon, I think it was probably about a tenner or something like that or wasn't ex inexpensive, I, I, you know, wattage, yeah, highest one, but essentially this is used to finally cure the uh, models. Now do you need one? Preferably it's a lot more convenient if you live in a very sunny place, lucky you, um, but you can leave these on your windowsill and in a day they will be fully cured. I mean they're, they're pretty well cured now but they just need that final. So UV lamp or uh, a lot of people have those little nail things that you can do gel nails in so you may have 
um, somebody in the family who does gel nails, or you may do gel nails yourself, um, but you can actually use that. So any form of UV, I use that, and I couple that with, uh, and I don't think I've got it to hand. So I don't use this particular one, but I have a plastic container. I just put the items, let's say if I was curing these, just put the items in there, pop that on top, start the UV up, leave it for a few minutes or 10 minutes, I've left them for ages sometimes, um, it's not going to do much uh, thing, but you will find actually if you've got a lighter coloured resin you've used it, you can end up, they can end up looking like they've got sunburn, so it's not the end of the world, um, you won't damage them uh, if you leave it on too long, obviously we want to leave them on long enough, so and you will actually feel um, when they come out that um, they feel a lot harder. So uh, essentially that's the items that you're going to need. You notice that I've got my gloves on. Now when these do arrive uh, with you, you, they will have a bit of a smell about them because it's probably still residue of isopropanol on them. If you think you've got any allergies then clearly get yourself some gloves, um, some surgical gloves. Uh, once again that's down to, down to you and, and whether or not you've got any particular skin conditions. Um, the actual residue you won't call I mean they're all ready for painting that once they're mounted that and I've uh, set them um, then uh, I will be looking to paint them and some of the examples here these are literally clipped and mounted and then I've just uh, put my base uh, on there with hand and uh, they're ready to, uh, to, to go so that's the items that you need let's go through now and let's uh, discuss the um, the process that we need to follow so we've got our models, uh, your models have arrived, they will arrive in a plastic bag like that, there may be a, a couple of plates in each bag, but the whole idea about putting them in the plastic bag was to keep that um, uh, solvent uh, from drying out really, um, it does take a long time for that to happen, but bearing in mind that some of these are going right away right around the world, so um, that's how you'll receive them and then you can take them out from there. Um, you might notice a bit of resi residue on them, that's nothing to worry about. Um, actually I've undercoated loads um, with that sort of slightly sticky residue on and it hasn't been a problem so and uh, as you can see all these have the sort of same and they've got nicely base coated and then uh, painted from there. But one thing you must not do, um, once you take those out please don't leave them in the sunlight and please don't put them under the UV before you have trimmed them. Um, there is a reason for that. I'm going to go and show you on a computer screen in a minute one of the, re the reasons why you don't want to be baking them so as the final stage. It will do after you've mounted them on a uh, on your bits and uh, on your uh, on your bases. So once you put the bases on and everything's trimmed off, then please go ahead and uh, of course give them that final UV blast to uh, set them. Now they won't be super bendy but you, you, you'll, you, you'll see what I mean. Now this is a good example to start with for cleaning off and that is what we call the flame demon. It has a lot of very fine details onto it and uh, to explain uh, the process that we're going to go through from clipping I'll take you over to the computer screen and have a closer look at the uh, graphic uh, to do that with. So here is the graphic of the uh, design stage, uh, shall we say the, the, the slicing stage of the uh, model in question and what we need to remove as it's printed you will see that there is this uh, trellis work of uh, support material, the model being in the blue colour and the uh, support material being in that sort of browny colour and uh, as you can see the end of each support and if I can sort of just manoeuvre in you can see that they're actually at a point. Now these are put in here to support material that would otherwise not be able to be printed because it's overhangs and as such um, uh, we, we need to remove on there. So the model wouldn't print correctly without that. Now in pre-production pre uh, I would have uh, as best as possible made sure that some of these supports didn't actually go into the model if that makes sense and uh, wherever I can we will try and remove those. However in this particular case actually and this is a good example of the flame demon um, and I was talking about the very fine detail. Now these fingers are really fine details that you have there and you can see that they have to have support. Now if you 
uh, put your models under UV or you left them out in the sunlight they would harden and if leaving these um, supports on when you actually come to clip them off you can still do so and I've left a lot of models in boxes uh, not in sunlight but uh, certainly the flame demon that I'm going to be trimming off for you on this video uh, it's probably been in the box for about six months and it will naturally harden a little bit um, it's not been in sunlight but um, it might make things a little difficult but the problem is when we actually cut this if this was uh, set solid then um, the shock of the cutting will in fact uh, could break off this very fine detail and that's the problem that we have the uh, so that's why I insist that, that you leave them uh, for final setting uh, once uh, you're happy with everything clipped off it's uh, it's probably an easier method anyway um, but so don't leave them in the sunlight don't let them harden off um, they will stay in those bags for quite some considerable time but realistically if you are buying a number of these I would get them clipped and mounted and stored away safely ready for your painting the other thing I will explain to you when we show the complete model and it's a bit more difficult on the video um, again the thing is as you can see here what I'm going to want to do is I won't attempt to cut uh, in most cases uh, right above at this point here where the knuckle is um, on this thing I will cut further down I will look to trim down here now these are tend to be set at diff uh, quite they are quite thin and majority of the times once you've freed off the bases and stuff these will actually just snap away quite cleanly but in most cases what I'll do is I will trim these to about this level here when the arrows go in there and um, I can think of point to the finger so around about there and then leaving a stub which I can then nip um, with the thing. The other uh, tip I can say is with your side cutters try and crease it so that you only cut say halfway through sort of don't go for the full cut sort of give it a nip and uh, that will make uh, a little bit easier to nip the second section rather than a, a quick snap across there which could um, actually uh, break things off for you so that's how it looks uh, we want to uh, that's how it'll come out of the bath um, there's nothing uh, of a collision going on in there but you'll you'll get some models that may unfortunately have the odd collision and that's where part of this support goes into so you'll need to use your side cutters and that just to model out uh, some of that uh, some of that problem anyway so that's a little closer look at uh, the flame demon let's go back to the bench now and uh, let's carry on with our actual trimming so back at the bench now and here we have our flame demon and um, you'll notice actually that I've broken it away from uh, the rest of them um, once again as you get them they will all appear in a nice big uh, group there's nothing um, absolutely no problem at all um, if you can you can actually snap those away if you want to work on individual models so there's no problem there and uh, that is fairly thin is the base but that I can actually break up the models however this one has actually been um, uh, readied up uh, by itself so I'll make sure I keep that in the frame okay so here we have those supports we were talking about along here so we're going to have to make incisions at the top of these supports and once again with particularly the flame demon such a delicate uh, fingers there that you um, this model has actually been in a box um, not under UV um, but as a sort of partially hardened it's still I mean I would have said it was probably about six eight months it's been just over there not necessarily in the dark but uh, certainly not under direct sunlight but you can still feel that it is a little bit more flexible than um, a little bit softer than it would have been however I'm going to have to take special care it's not fresh out of the vat and those little fingers um, are quite delicate so I'm very concerned with the uh, bits that go to there now you'll notice that there's this baseline so the way that I approach things I will tr cut uh, very closely along the bottoms of these and try and free it off the base so you should be able to obviously taking your time as we go through if you oh there so it takes a bit of effort and to go around the model and you will find that it's a lot easier 
to clip through. Now I will carry on with this, I won't bore you with the full details, but when I was talking about actual, uh, let me get that into perspective for you, um, let's take for instance this particular cut here. I talked about just nipping the actual material rather than going through for a full cut like that. Just go for a nip, a sort of shave, and actually that just popped off. Um, that was quite a, a brittle piece, but it did leave this little nub, which you can then get your side cutter in and very gently move away. And if there was anything left of that, you could actually go in and give it a little scrape with that. Now, one thing I do advertise uh, get is one of these magnifiers. Okay, if you can get yourself uh, a magnifier as well, that's one of the things I, I didn't put down for the listing, but that will help you greatly when you want to really look in and uh, get the detail. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to break now, I'm going to get the rest of this base off from the bottom, and then um, that should just leave the rest of the uh, the work to uh, to carry on. So back in a second. Okay, so there we have our flame demon um, removed of all of its uh, um, uh, uh, trellis work and support scene so that took me all of probably uh, three or four minutes uh, just going round. I've got to say there are probably the odd few little nubs uh, still to take off and what I'll be doing next is to just go over um, either with the scalpel and uh, just take out that odd little bit there but strangely enough even after all this time um, it's still actually um, coming away really nicely so you can have a little bit of a clean up going around this is a particular model I mean don't they aren't all like this this has got quite a few little bits and pieces the flame demon is, is quite an intricate uh, model uh, from there so uh, that's what we're going to be doing so um, he will go forward in a minute and have a little bit more clean up what I will say is one thing you need to keep care of is all of these bits and pieces now when you are trimming I would suggest that you sort of put your fingers round so you can uh, hold on to the bits because they will ping everywhere, trust me. Whether they're soft or thin, they will actually catapult all over the place. So one of the things I do is sort of keep them cupped in my hands and then remove them uh, and cut away the support uh, by that. So just be that aware if you are working in a sort of a non-workshop on your dining room table and stuff, you don't want um, uh, your partner to be commenting on the amount of bits of uh, plastic or, uh, or resin or liner. So there's the flame demon, a couple of little bits to uh, tidy up and, um, and we'll take it from there. So next thing is, is to base the demon and um, I'm going to go ahead and actually base him now um, just to uh, keep it in one shot. Let's just pull that uh, out for a minute. Uh, oh, we got our way. Okay, so there we are, my flame demon. Now I have produced um, generic stands, uh, which we're going to put them on, and that flame demon will go very nicely on there. Okay, now I did say about using the mitre fast, what we call it. So you, this is why you need a, a fast acting. Oh, bouncing around there, a fast acting. Uh, agent so uh, there so we can apply our super glue to start with which is uh, a not quick set it's not until it quick sets under the agent so we can actually put some nice big dab on his foot because gonna be sort of you know the bases are there for you to do modeling or, or you know if you wanted to so once we get him into his position I'm happy with and I think he's pretty much up on his toes is the old and I can hold him in position there without fear that's not going to set any minute soon so I can just get this spray and a little spray on there hold that for a few seconds and you'll know because all of a sudden it will suddenly harden and are we ready there we go Okay, so there he is. Yep, it will carry on hardening. But there's the flame demon ready for uh, for base coating, and um, that's it. So you'll be doing that to all of yours and base coating, painting, playing on the table. There we are. So that's the whole progression bit right the way from. 
thing. Now, one thing, of course, obviously, just to finalise that, is that also these bases have been made so that you can mount them in uh, those holders. That's the goal. So, how do you tell between sort of standard and elite units? Well, there we have the gold stand. It has an embossed number on as well. So, there's my flame demon. You can push them out from the bottom. I would suggest, and I'll mention it in the thing, is that uh, there's a bit of a sort of ridge around these. I would suggest that you uh, sort of thin that down a bit, if you know what I mean. I mean, you know, it is PLA, it can vary in size, so you might want to uh, do that before you put the models on so you get a nice fit that you're happy with. And don't forget, the uh, paint will put on a few microns as well, so, uh, you know, that just needs a little bit of tidying up of it. Anyway, there we are, Flame Demon, ready to go. That's it, folks, so that's the little instructional on how to uh, deal with your and how to prep your uh, print of the models that we uh, that you're probably having some do. Um, that's it, folks. Obviously, if there's any questions or anything that you need to ask or anything that I've proposed and comments, please leave in the section. And anyway, take care and have a lot of fun uh, doing these models. Thank you.